Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, church. Sorry about that. You know, it's a Tuesday of uh, ups and downs. People going to jail. People out here shooting for no reason. I guess there's a song that the 70s would say in a, in a band goes on. Mm. Humility gives wings to prayer, church. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient. Band with one another in love. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Humility does not have its eyes on self, but rather on God and others. God puts a great price on the humility of, of heart, that which brings the praying soul near to God is humility of heart. That which gives wings to prayer is a humble mind, pride, self-esteem, and self-praise eventually shut the door of prayer. Approach God with humility and meekness. Do not be puffed up with self-importance or overestimate your virtue and good works. It is better to be clothed with humility than with an, expe with an expression, with an expensive garment. Father God, you put a great price on humility. Please give me a humble and gentle heart so that my soul may draw near, may draw even closer to you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Church, <clears throat> My message today comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. Keeping the man thing, the main thing. Keeping the main thing, the main thing, sorry. This text records our Lord's last meeting with his disciples while he was here on earth. He is preparing to ascend back into heaven to sit down at the right hand of God. Before he leaves, he commands and commissions his men to reach the world with his message. He reminds them of what should be the central focus of their ministry. He reminds them that they are to keep the main thing, the main thing. To over to, he had to overcome a distraction. The disciples want to talk about uh, future things. Jesus is trying to conduct the world's first mission uh, conference and they want to turn into a prophecy conference. They want to know if the time has come for Jesus to be established here, his kingdom here on earth. He tells them that the times and seasons are not their concern. Their responsibility was to be faithful to him and work while they wait. Nothing has changed. Our duty is not to get caught up in future events or even other theological disputes and that distract us from the main thing. We need to be careful, church, that we do not allow Satan to distract us from our very purpose in being left in this world. Our duty is to be busy working for the Lord while, while we wait 
for him to return. Verse 8 tells us what our duty is. Jesus here commands his disciples living in all time periods to be his witness to the world of gospel and of having and of his saving grace. Many believers disagree about how salvation takes place, but that does not change the gospel. People should be able to disagree about the methods while embracing the same message. Uh, every believer is commissioned, commanded, and constructed to share the gospel with, the, with a lost world. We are his ambassadors in this world. Let me share some of the qualities shared by our gospel witness. This text reminds us of exactly what we are to be doing as we move through this world. This passage teaches us about the main thing that the church is to be doing. I want to examine this passage and preach for a moment on keeping the main thing the main thing. Why do we, why do I say this is the main thing? I say it because here is Jesus Christ, crucified and resurrected from the dead, and about to ascend from heaven, we, he could have taken or uh, uh, talked about anything in the world, but his last words were a command and a commission to share the gospel church. It is... <clears throat> If it was that important to him, it should be equally important to us. The church needs to learn, church, the, the, the church needs to learn this lesson about keeping the main thing the main thing. Church, we must have the right message. Jesus tells his men that they ought to be witness unto me. Jesus is to, to be the sole focus of their message. That has not changed. We are to tell the world about him. We are, to, we are not to talk about us, our lives, our beliefs, our denominations, our church, or our future, our favorite preacher. None of those things have saving power. His message does. We are to tell the world about Jesus. We ought to tell the world, we ought to tell the message of his love, church, his death and his resurrection. We ought to share the message of the gospel. We ought to tell the world that Jesus will save anyone who comes to him by faith. We are, we are not sent to try and impress the world with our gospel theology. Many people know the theology of the theories of theology, but they do not know Jesus. Many <coughs> church know all about the glories of heaven, but they are headed to hell, like that blind man in John 9. All I know is, once I was blind, but now I see, and Jesus is a reason. That is the message we are to share with the world. Our only message is to point people to Jesus. He is the only hope the world has for salvation. As someone said, we are, uh, all, all we are is one big, uh, beggar, uh, beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Jesus is the bread of life, church. He is the solution to the spiritual hunger of the world. I need to share with others what others share with me. We must have the right message. We must have the right methods. The word witness translate the Greek word methods. It refers to those who bear witness to the truth. It came to be used of those who, bear, who bore the ultimate witness to the truth of those who lay down their lives for the truth, thus we get the world martyr from this world. 
The issue is not of methods and legends, but facts and truth. Jesus is calling his people to tell others the truth about him. The word witness was used in biblical times like it is used today. It speaks of those who testify in a court of law. A witness in a trial is called upon to tell what they have seen and what they know to be true. God is calling his people to tell what they know and what they have seen to be true. Do you know anything about Jesus Christ? Has God done anything for you through Jesus Christ? If you can answer yes to those questions, that is what you ought to tell the world. Do you know that God loves you? Tell the world. Do you know that you are saved? Tell the world. Do you know how God saves sinners? Tell the world. Do you know who to tell? Tell the world. We have some great examples in the Bible. Peter at Pentecost, Philip and the Ethiopian, Paul before Agape, the blind man before the Shatterians. These great witness just told what they know. This is all the Lord wants to do. We must have the right message. We must have the right method. We must have the right mindset. The witness in a court of law is to testify to the judge and the jury. The witness to Jesus Christ is to testify to the whole world. That is a big task. So Jesus breaks it down for us. We ought to begin close and move out. We need to adapt the mindset of John Wesley, who said, the world is my parish. Why is he knew that everywhere sinners could be found, there was a need for the gospel and the gospel witness church. Our mission field is everywhere lost people can be found. Most of us will never go to the uttermost part of the earth, but we can serve in our Jerusalem. We can witness to our families, our friends, church, our co-workers, total strangers, to anyone we meet, anywhere we go. We ought to always be on a mission for Jesus telling a lost and dying world that Jesus saves, if we get the opportunity to go to our Judea, our Samaria, and the uppermost part of the earth, we should make good use of those open doors. Everyone we meet is either a believer or they are in the need of the gospel. Let's tell them about our Savior. Let's share the glorious need, news that Jesus saves and will save all who will come to him by faith. What is really sad is that most believers will not talk to anyone who is outside their comfort zone. They will visit friends, uh, family, and acquaintance, but they won't go to someone who is lost. They are afraid to share the gospel outside their own realms of safety. As a result, most church members are not involved in any kind of evangelism. They, um, they have the mindset, my four and no more. When there is a whole world that must be reached with the gospel of grace, and it is our job to take it to them. If we really believe that people are going to hell without Jesus. And if we are really, and if we really believe that the gospel is for all men, then why aren't we uh, going more to get 
doing more church to get the gospel to them. Why aren't we out there telling a lost world that Jesus saves? Could it be that we really don't believe anything we claim to believe? Could it be that we are saved and satisfied? Could it be that we have forgotten to keep the main thing the main thing? We are preaching on the radio and the internet every day. We are on TV every Sunday. A small handful of our people are involved in outreach through care ministry. These things are good, but do, uh, do they, uh, but they do not take away our individual responsibility to share the gospel with the world church. We must have the right message. We must have the right method. We must have the right mindset church. We must have the right muscles. In our message is to have, a, have, to have any power if our message is to have any power, church, if our message are to be successful, and, and if our mindset is to ever be what it ought to be, we are going to need help from outside ourselves. Jesus tells us in this verse that our help comes from the Holy Ghost. room were promised that the Spirit of God was coming and that when he came we would fill them with God's power. When that power came on the day of Pentecost those testified disciples who had been hiding from the Jews in fear become bold preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they preached the gospel, 3,000 souls were saved. What made the difference? If it wasn't their eloquence, it wasn't their orator, it wasn't their delivery, what made the difference was the power of God on their lives. Where did that power come from, church? It, come, it came from the fact that they, are, they were saved and indwelled by the Holy Spirit. It came from the fact, church, that they were prayed up and clean before God. It came from the fact that they were united in love, heart, and purpose. That same power, church, is available to you today. If we are going to have the power of God on our witness, we, our words, and our works, we are going to have great, have, have to get our lives in the kind of shape the Lord can bless and use. We are going to have to get uh, like the earthly church, the early church. When we do, we will see the Lord pour out our power on our witness to the world. Until we do, we will spin our, our wills and accomplish nothing for our glory. We desperately need God's power on our lives and on our church. We will never enjoy the unaction and power until our hearts are right with one another and with God and with Him. If church, if you have a problem with the brother or sister in Christ church and you have not dealt with that issue biblically, that is a hindrance to the power of God be manifest in our life. If you have some secret uh, sin built up, buried in your life, it is a hindrance to the power of God being manifest in you. We need to stop looking at others and deal with our own hearts. When we do, and when we get where we would have used to be, or we used to be, we can and will enjoy his power on the on our earth, on our witness. In the conclusion, church, how important is it being to witness to you? What are you willing to change in your life so that you can be more attentive, effective as a witness? What are you willing to do to deal with so that the power of God may rest upon you. 
What price are you willing to pay for the touch of God on your life? How long has it been since you told someone else about Jesus? Let me remind you that every one of us will give an account of our witness to Jesus uh, to, G to Jesus come uh, someday. But our church is late and the time to tell the world is now. John 9 verse 4. Church, we have been distracted from our mission. I think we all share some responsibility in this church. This is the hour to recapture our mission. This is the moment when the when the main thing needs to become the main thing once again. It's the time to deal with our personal issues and it's time to deal with our sins so that the power of God will rest on us and that God might be pleased to save souls in this place. It's time to obey his voice, church. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. I will finish with this book. I lost it yesterday, but God said the devil is a liar. We found it today. The divine cure for fear. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything be prayer and petitions with thanksgivings present uh, present your request to God Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 this scripture verses describe the divine cure for all fear and anxiety and worry all those things are closely related to doubt and unbelief this scripture verse is also the divine prescription for securing the peace that suppresses all un surpasses all understanding and keep the heart and mind in quietness and peace. We need to guard against unbelief as we would against against as enemies. Faith needs to be cultivated. Faith is increased by exercise. By being put to use, it is nourished in trials. Faith grows by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Most of all, faith thrives in an atmosphere of prayer. Dear Lord God, thank you that your Word so clearly assures us that we need not worry or fear. You are always in control. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, amen. If this message have been, um, if this message have touched your heart, find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let the church say.